Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to learn the simplest way for saving and loading data in Unity using JSON as our file format. Let's begin. So here is our scene that we've been using to test saving and loading. There's a player character in here. I can tell him to move around and tell him to mine these nodes. As you can see, the gold mount increases. The goal is to save the gold amount and player position. So first we set up saving and loading using the player prefs, which is a very simple way of storing persistent data in Unity. Then we looked into saving and loading using save files. We learned how we can write and read text from a file and how to create our own file format to store multiple values. Now in this video we're going to use JSON instead of our own file format. If you're interested in what is JSON and how it's formatted, you can check out my previous video that goes into the details of the JSON format. So let's check out the code. Here in the game handler, we have a save and load function. We're currently set up to save using a save file. First, we grab all the data that we wish to save. We store it in a temporary string array. We join that array using our save separator, which is a constant defined up here. Then with the final save string, we simply save it into our save file. Now, instead of doing it that way, we want to use the JSON utilities functions that are part of Unity to serialize and deserialize a save object. So let's begin by making a save object and seeing how JSON works in Unity. So let's go down here and in here, we're going to make a private class and let's call it save object. This will contain all the data that we wish to save. So for now, let's just make a public int for our goal amount. All right, let's leave it at that just for starters. Let's go up here onto our awake and in here, let's instantiate the class with a certain amount of gold. Let's make a save object, save object equals a new save object. And we're going to set the gold amount to let's say five. Now let's serialize this object. To do that, we're going to use JSON utility dot to JSON. This receives an object, which in this case, our save object, this function, as you can see, it returns a string, which is the JSON representation. So let's make a string JSON, which is our JSON text. Now let's simply print it out, do a debug.log of our JSON string and see what happens. All right, as you can see in here, we have a correct JSON representation of our save object. You can see that it stored the gold amount as five. All right, so we can now convert a save object into a JSON string. Now let's do the reverse. So let's take our JSON string and convert back into another save object. For that, we're going to go again into the JSON utility. And now we're going to use the from JSON function. This function is a generic. So it takes the type of object that we wish to load, which in this case is a save object. And then we receive the JSON string. So that, and this whole thing will return an object of type save object. So save object, let's say loaded save object. So now let's do a print on the loaded save object dot gold amount. So do a debug dot log of the loaded dot gold amount, which should return five. So let's see. Yep, there you go. The first one has the JSON string containing five on the gold amount. Then the second one loaded that string into a save object and the save object now contains a gold amount of five. So now that we know how to convert to and from JSON, let's apply that to our save and load functions. Now, first we need to go down here and expand our save object to also store a vector three for our player position. So a public vector three for our player position. Previously, we were storing the X and Y separately, but since we're using JSON, we can easily just serialize a vector three, making our save file much simpler. So now let's go up here on the save. And instead of creating all of this string, let's erase this. And in here, we're going to create a save object, which will be a new save object. And we're going to set the fields of the gold amount to the gold amount that we defined up here. And also the field for the player position to our player position. All right, so our save object now has all the correct fields. Now again, do the same thing that we did up here to get the JSON string based on this save object. Then we take that JSON string and that's what we use to save in our save file. So let's run the code and see if our save file now correctly contains a JSON string. Here I am, let's go down here, mine a couple of gold. So one, two, three, and now let's say move them in here and now hit save. 
There you go, he saved. Now let's check out the save file. As you can see, the save file contents does indeed contain a JSON save string. So now that saving is working, let's set up the load function. So here on the load, first we are correctly loading the save string by reading all the text. Okay, that is correct. Now we're no longer going to have the contents as a string split, but instead as a save object. So we're going to use JSON utility dot from JSON. We're going to use the save object object type, and we're going to use the save string that we loaded from the file. This will return a save object. Now we can erase all of this and we're simply going to use the save object dot in this case set the position to the player position and go into the save object and set the goal amount. So we are loading our data based on a string stored in our save file. We convert that into our save object and then we load the correct data into our game. All right, so let's run the code. Okay, everything is on default. He's on zero zero with zero of gold. And now if I hit load, Yep, there you go. He went in there and now he has three gold, which is exactly what we saved. So we now have our save system working with a very robust and standard file format. Now let's just make this a bit more robust and make a save file folder that can handle multiple save files. We're going to make it automatic to create the folder if it doesn't exist yet. So let's go to our game handler and on our awake, we can remove our testing code. And in here, let's do a test if the directory does exist. So we can go up here. We no longer need this save string. So let's set a private const string for our save folder. And we're going to use the same thing that we use down here. So application.datapath. That gives us the data path of our executable. So in here, let's add another slash and let's say saves. This will be our saves folder. Now, as you can see, this contains an error since application.datapath is instantiated at runtime. Therefore, it cannot be a constant. So we can simply solve this by making this a static read only. And okay, we have essentially a constant, but that is set on runtime. Okay, so now down here, before we do anything, let's make sure the folder does exist. So in here, do a if directory dot exists. Directory is part of the system.io namespace. And in here, let's just test if the save folder does exist. If it does not exist, then we need to create it. So we do directory dot create directory of our save folder. All right, so now on our save down here, instead of using application on data path, we're going to use our save folder. Now, in order to keep our code clean, let's copy all of our save system into its own class. So let's go in here and make another script and let's call it save system. Now in here, this will be a simple class, so no mono behavior and let's make it static. So we never instantiate this class. So in here, let's start with a public static void init function to initialize the save system, which is what we're going to call in here. So do save system dot init. Now in there, let's just initialize by testing the save folder and let's copy the save folder into there. Of course, we need a peer using system.io. Okay, so now we need a public static void for our save. And now in order to save, we're going to receive a string for our save string. And then we're going to have a public static string for our load, which will return a save string. So in here, let's copy the file.write all text into there. So in here, we're going to do save system.save and we're going to save, send in our JSON string. And in here, we're going to save into our save file using our save string. So for the load, we're going to have our save string, which will be from the save system.load. And here, if you cannot load anything, then it will return null. So let's simply do if save string, if it is different from null, then we're going to load like normal. So let's copy all of this into our load. So in here, we test if the save file does exist. If so, we return the save string. If the file does not exist, then let's return null. Okay, back in the game handler, in here, everything is correct. We ask the save system to return our save string, then we test if it is not null, then we load the correct object. 
and on the save we are telling the save system to save and we're sending the JSON string. So now our code is nice and easily separated. So let's run the code and see if everything is working exactly as previously. Okay, here I am on 00, zero and if I load, it says no save since there is no save on the newly created save folder. As you can see, we have the saves folder automatically created and it is currently empty. So let's try to save and see if a file is spawned in there. So let's go, mine a bit. Okay, two, now let's save, save. And there you go, there is now a file on the saves folder. We can erase the old file. So now that we have a saves folder that is automatically created, let's save multiple files. So in here on our save function, Instead of always saving into the same file, let's save into a different file. So in here, let's make a simple int for the save number and let's start at save number one. And now in here, let's simply do a while file.exists and we're going to call the file save, then we add the save number and then we add dot text. So if there is already a file with that save number, then we're simply going to increase the save number save number plus plus. So essentially this while will continue running as long as the save number already exists. So when we exit this while, we know that the save number is unique. So let's save using that. So save plus the save number plus dot text. Okay, so let's run the code and see if various saves are created. So here I am and I save and here I hit refresh. And there you go, there's save one. Now I save again hit refresh, and there you go. Now we got save two, save again, now we got save three. All right, so we are now correctly saving without overwriting. Now let's set up the unloading. We want to automatically load the most recent file. So let's go into our load function. And in here, we want to get the list of all files in our save folder. So for that, let's create a directory info, which is a new directory info using our save folder. And now we can use the directory info.getFiles, which will return an array of file info. Okay, so we now have all of our save files. Now let's cycle through that array. And in here, let's locate the most recent file. So let's go up here, make the file info for the most recent file. Let's set the null. And in here, file time if this one was written after the most recent file dot last right time, then this one is more recent. So the most recent becomes this one. And down here, if the most recent file, if it is not null, that means we have a file to load. And in here, we're simply going to do the same thing we did down here. Except instead of loading from save.txt, we're going to load from the most recent file. And in case we do not have a most recent file, we're going to return null. Okay, great. So our load function, we first create a directory info, which is, allows us to do various things with the directory. So we create one using the save folder path. Then we get all the files that contain .txt, which is the format that we're using for our save files, but it could be anything. So we get a list of all our save files. We cycle through the list of save files and we set the most recent file. So if we have none, then set to this one. If we do have a most recent file, then select the one that is most recent, the one that has the highest last write time. Then down here, we simply check if we do have a most recent file, then we return the string that is loaded from that file. If not, then we simply return null. So this function is now correctly returning the most recent file. So here I am in the game and now if I hit L, Yep, there you go, it loaded the previous file. So now let's go up here and load again. Okay, he's still loading in there. Now if I go in here and I hit save, now I move away. And now if I hit L, I should load in here instead of in here. So hit L and there you go, it loaded the most recent file. Now I can go in here and manually delete the last file. So save for, get rid of that one. And now if I hit load, I will be down here instead of back up here. Yep, there you go. So there you have it, we took our saving and loading from before, and instead of making our own file format, we used the JSON format since it is very robust and easy to use. Then we added support for automatically creating a folder to store our save files and saved multiple files while loading from the most recent one. 
As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.